Hey everybody, welcome back to the second part of our Neutropenia White Blood Cell Disorder series. So, in this video, we're going to be function focusing sorry, on the major functional uh, neutrophil disorders. The major neutrophil functional disorders. So these disorders um, are focusing more on problems and mutations of neutrophils that directly inhibit their ability to either um, perform their function as granulocytes in being bactericidal and killing things, or in reaching the target tissues. And we have three diseases that are gonna that are gonna fall into that category. We've got um, Chidiakigashi syndrome, chronic granulomatous disease, and leukocyte adhesion deficiency. So let's go over to the video and we'll start going through them. So the scene here again is in Switzerland, and this time instead of up in the uh, ski slopes uh, having some fun, we're at the major border crossing for Switzerland right here. So we have our Switzerland symbol for neutrophils, for neutral neutrophils, and we have our major border crossing. Major because these are the major functional disorders. Now the first of these is going to be represented over here by all this mess. So this is going to count as our Chidiak Higashi syndrome. So Chidiakigashi, because we have a cheetah and we have a yak right here. This is our uh, train track over here that's kind of going through the border. It's bringing a bunch of, you know, goods and apparently livestock that are from, you know, really exotic places of the world over to Switzerland. And we have a cheetah and we have a yak. And this is for cheetah, yak, Chidiak Higashi syndrome. Now over here we have uh, one of our neutrophil workers at the border crossing, and he's going over the manifesto right here of this of this train, and he's scratching his head because who in Switzerland needs a cheetah and a yak, right? But uh, you can see here that he's looking at this list of the things that were brought in. Now the reason he's looking at this list is because Chidiakigashi syndrome is an autosomal recessive mutation in the CHS gene, uh, surprise, Chidiakigashi, Chidiakigashi syndrome, CHS gene, and that's this gene is responsible for encoding the lysosomal trafficking regulator, or LYST, LIST, lysosomal trafficking regulator. And that's kind of what he's doing too, right? That's his job. He kind of regulates the traffic going into Switzerland, and he's doing it by looking at this list. Now, over here with number four, we can see that if, with this mutation, since our list is broken, um, what happens is that we can't have fusion of lysosomes and vesicles. So we have the, we have the lysosomes that have all these degrading enzymes for, that neutrophils use to kill things, and we have the vesicles that have, you know, taken up bacteria or other pathogens, and they're supposed to fuse so that we can kill these, these, these pathogens, but since our list is broken, we can't do that. And that's seen here by this train track, this train that's lost its connection, it's snapped off, and it's going off on its own instead of staying fused with the rest of itself. So defect in list, no fusion of lysosomes and vesicles. Now, the uh, the way that this presents in in the Chidiakigashi syndrome is in several different ways. We have lots of different symptoms going on. So first of all, we have um, uh, platelet dysfunction. So this this doesn't just affect neutrophils. We also have some dysfunction going on in platelets, and this is shown here by the recurring sketchy symbol of platelet platelets platelet plates falling over and smashing on the ground. And now because they're now they're dysfunctional, they can't do their job. Um, we've also got some uh, some uh, boxes over here that have fallen over and spilled their goods. This is to show us some of the other things, uh, some symbols for the other symptoms that are going on. One of which are these giant pink spectacles, you know, glasses. And that's because on uh, peripheral smear on the, in these neutrophils, you're often able to see giant vesicles. So spectacle vesicles. And again, this is kind of what they'll look like too. These really big pink vesicles for our spectacles. These patients also classically present with uh, photophobia. So we've got some barrels of SPF infinity sunscreen. That's pretty strong stuff. I'd recommend it. It's highly effective. And uh, for photophobia, they're afraid of the light. And then we also typically have albinism. They'll have patchy albinism going all, uh, throughout their skin. And that's, uh, that's evidenced by these cans of white paint. So albinism for white paint. If we go back over here to our yak, we'll also notice that he's got some symbols on him, right? He's got uh, spleen and liver patches on his coat, which uh, normally Sketchy likes to put on cows, but, you know, we don't have a cow here. Swiss only like their yaks, so we've got a yak, and we've got hepatosplenomegaly, and he's also got some uh, little bumps around his neck, and that's for lymphadenopathy. So we've got lymphadenopathy, 
and hepatosplenomegaly. Now note, just because it's on his neck doesn't mean that this lymph uh is strictly just in his cerv the cervical lymph nodes, but um, you know it looks like it's kind of an easy way to demonstrate it, so just keep that in mind. And that's about it for our, uh, our uh, Chiakigashi syndrome. It's all the big symptoms that we have to worry about. Just remember that it's in the it's uh, cheetah and yak Chiakigashi. When it presents, it's caused by um, a defect in the CHS gene that uh, encodes for list, and it leads to inability to fuse lysosomes and vesicles. Next, we've got the middle of this picture right here. And this is going to be for our chronic granulomatous disease. And we've got that represented by a sign here for this crossing center called the Crossing Guard Depot, CGD, CGD, chronic granulomatous disease. Now, chronic granulomatous disease uh, occurs due to mutations in NADPH oxidase. And that's what we're representing here with these big oxide tanks. Now, NADPH oxidase is important for producing the respiratory burst. This is kind of like, uh, uh, just like there's enzymes in, in these lysosomes that degrade bacteria, we've also got this whole complex of enzymes that's job is solely to produce these oxide uh, chemicals and components to further you know, activate these enzymes and directly uh, uh, destroy or damage pathogens. As you can imagine, we have a similar situation where if we don't have functional NADPH oxidase, then our neutrophils can't function in being bactericidal. There's also an important thing to note with these tanks, and that's that uh, one of them is blue and one of them is pink. And this is in reference to the uh, 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 NBT test, the nitro blue tetrazolin. And in this test, we expose neutrophils to this nitro blue uh, tetrazolin chemical. And what's supposed to happen in this, as we can see in this functional tank, is that it will degrade this pink chemical and the neutrophils will appear blue. Now, if NADPH oxidase is broken, like in CGD patients, they won't be able to do this. And the chemical, <clears throat> the chemical will stay pink. And then we'll see pink neutrophils. So pink is a positive NBT test for CGD. Keep that in mind. Now, uh, CGD is an X-linked is uh, typically an X-linked uh, inherited gene. So we have two neutrophil guards over here. One of them is male. One of them has some hair. It's supposed to be female. And we can see that the guy isn't really doing much. He's staying still like he like he's supposed to. You know, keeping watch. Whereas the female guard is running off, and that's because it's X-linked, so transmitted in the X female chromosome. And she's chasing after this fox, and that's because the most common mutation is in the PHOX gene, the fox gene. And this fox gene encodes for the GP glycoprotein 91 of NADPH oxidase. And we have another fox over here, who while this one's distracting the guards, this fox is biting off this GP91 pressure meter. You can think of it as a, uh, it's a, a gauge for pressure, a GP, 91 and it's bit it off and again this is the dysfunctional tank it looks pink because it doesn't have this gp91 doesn't work can't degrade the nitro uh, the, the nbt and that's about it for our chronic granulomatous disease uh, moving on we're going to come over here to the right side of our picture where we've got this all going on and this half of our picture is for the pedestrians that are crossing the border, right? We have a train station over here, and then we've also got the pedestrian roadway, so cars can just drive across. And clearly, one car is not paying attention. And this car has just blasted through these uh, these uh, barriers, and the barriers have stuck to him. And as 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 he's just driving on through, eager to get to Switzerland, probably to go skiing. And this is for uh, to demonstrate leukocyte adhesion deficiency. So this car has adhered to all the stuff, it's a leukocyte adhesion deficiency. Now leukocyte adhesion deficiency uh, is a problem where neutrophils can't slow down, stick to the vessel walls, and then egress into tissues that are undergoing inflammation, which is critical for their normal functioning, and these neutrophils can't do it. So they're stuck in the bloodstream, they can't reach where they're trying to go. And this has three different types, each one with a different mutation that can all cause LAD. The first of these, and the most common by far, is uh, evidenced right here, and it's LAD type 1, caused by a defect in CD18. Now CD18 is a common uh, flow cytometry marker for neutrophils, um, and it's evidenced here by this vote sign, 
because in the U.S. at least, again, don't know why the Swiss are following U.S. Uh, U.S. money and voting laws, but heck, I'll go with it. You have to be 18 to vote. So this is going to be a recurring symbol for CD18. Second type of LAD is caused by um, defects in selectins, which are these surface proteins in neutrophils um, that, that help them bind and egress into tissues. And this is sort of identified by this sale sign. So in a sale, there's items that are selected to be on sale, right? So we have this select and sale going on. And that's going to be our symbol for LED type 2. And then lastly, we have LED type 3. We have a couple of guards over here who are clearly not happy with this, this reckless driver just barreling through their probably very expensive barriers. And one of them, this guy right here in particular, is being very stern and uh, uh, firm and being ye yelling at this, this driver as he just drives by recklessly. And this is to evidence firm T3, which is an integrant activator. It actually activates integrins, which like selectins are important for getting neutrophils adhered to the endothelium. And he's being firm with this driver for firm T3. T3 also because there are one, two, three guards here that are all reacting to this this, this this distraction. So we have firm T3. Firm T3. So those are three types of LAD, each of them with their own unique mutations, the most common of which again is type 1 with CD18. And it presents this LAD, they all present roughly with about the same symptoms. The most common and classical one that uh, case presentation will often give you is this stump. And this is because babies um, it'll, will often present right away in infancy with this with a delayed cord stump separation. Their, stump, their umbilical stumps will get, you know, um, swollen, blue, kind of necrotic looking um, because without these neutrophils, the, the separation of the stump is delayed. So we have a stump here to represent that. Another common disease, or common presentation, is uh, recurrent infections. Of course, if we can't have neutrophils, we can't have them destroying these infections, so they'll keep occurring. And often these infections are cutaneous. So we have this gentleman over here with a bunch of skin infections going on for recurrent skin infections. Now, in lab findings, this is very unique because unlike the other ones that are often neutropenic, they have low neutrophil counts. Here, we're going to have high neutrophil counts, elevated neutrophils. And that's, again, because since these neutrophils can't get to tissues, the body freaks out and says, hey, why aren't there any neutrophils coming? Make more of them. And the body goes, fine, chill out, dude, and makes more neutrophils. But they still can't get to tissues. They're just stuck in the blood. So we have high levels of neutrophils, again, for leukocyte adhesion deficiency. And lastly, there's not a specific symbol for it, but like I said earlier, CD18 is a very common neutrophil marker and a great way to diagnose this uh, test, especially since CD18 deficiency is the most common form of this disease, is with flow cytometry for CD18. If we find neutrophils that aren't testing positive for functional CD18, we know we have type 1 leukocyte adhesion deficiency. Lastly, we can look at the depot for this border crossing area, and this is going to tell us a little bit about the treatment for these different functional disorders. Number one uh, treatment is usually uh, with prophylactic antibiotics. Since we know these patients can't defend themselves and properly uh, fend off uh, specifically bacterial pathogens, they can't degrade them, we can treat them prophylactically with antibiotics. The two main ones being uh, sulfonamides, which are represented by these eggs right here, and conazoles for fungi, which is represented by this big cone. And they're here on this building because these are things that are not allowed into Switzerland. Eggs, because everyone knows the Swiss hate eggs, right? That's, that's just common sense. And then also because of cones. They've already got pine cone trees. They don't need more. So no eggs and cones are allowed in Switzerland. We treat patients prophylactically with sulfonamides and conazoles. Now, if necessary, uh, we can also treat these patients with transfusions, again, just like the congenital neutropenia disorders. Um, this is for acute or life-threatening or refractory situations that don't otherwise respond to treatment. And lastly, the only curative way to fix these patients is to get them stem cells that don't have these mutations that can then produce functional neutrophils. And that is with a bone marrow transplant. Now, the way that I'm going to represent bone marrow transplants in all of these videos is with this bag of seeds. And that's because we're kind of, that's basically what we're doing, is we're taking good seeds from someone else who doesn't have, you know, mutations, and we're seeding their bone marrow with new life.
and giving them new cells to make functional neutrophils. So if we ever see a bag of seeds, that's going to be for our bone marrow transplant. And that about wraps it up for all of our major functional neutrophil disorders. Next up, we're going to talk about the mild neutrophil functional disorders at the Mile High Swiss Mall.